All right, so this is an MPPT Solar uh, PCM3012. Uh, this is an MPPT charge controller. First one I've ever owned. Uh, I was going to get a Midnight Solar or something bigger for the uh, the larger array at the retreat, but that's uh, that's not working out very well right now. And uh, we're probably going to be splitting all that stuff up. But on my mobile rig, uh, I'm changing a lot of stuff around. So we're uh, transitioning to a motorhome system. And because there's limitations on the size of the solar array, I want to get the most out of it. So I'm going with a small scale MPPT charge controller that is made to give me more power efficiency with fewer panels. And the general number that a lot of people talk about in advertising is that you'll get 30% more power out of your net uh, power production using an MPPT charge controller as opposed to a PWM. Well, that's kind of true and kind of not. Uh, you're not going to surpass the ratings on your panels just because you're using a different uh, charge controller. What, what happens is you just have less power waste but you're, you're, you're not turning uh, 200 watts into 300 watts or 400 watts into 450 or anything like that. Uh, basically what it means is that there's less waste. So this particular system right now has only 200 watts worth of panels. It's an overcast day. So I'm only getting 22 watts out of it. In theory though, on a PWM charge controller like the NetMeter solar models, which I really personally like, the, um, they're still going to get power on a day, but it's hard to say how much, okay? And that's, that's the question. That's the question. Overcast, irregular thing. Uh, this rig is a little more mobile than the others, so I'm, I'm experimenting with this charge control, especially when normally I would just simply go and buy more panels if I want more power and use a simple, a keep it simple, stupid type charge controller. But sometimes you just don't have those choices in the parameters of the design you need to go with. Uh, this one has relatively standard cable connections. It did come with some other little cable connectors. The thing is they had little metal tails that would stick out of this and in doing that on something that's going down a road or could get bumped or jostled, uh, the little metal tails sticking out that these things are expected to plug into could bump into each other and, and short circuit off the battery. That's a bad thing. So I inserted these at the at the cable. Those are pretty AWG12, I believe, on relatively standard panel cable, stuff like that. I didn't go with any thicker, heavier cable because it's a relatively low wattage system. It's 200 watts max. Uh, our power production right now, again, low because it's, it's uh, overcast day. Uh, we can press a button here. I don't think it's going to give us much more than a backlight right now. Uh, you can do some things with holding the button down to uh, go with the battery, change your battery type or something like that. Basically, I've got number 101, which is a vented battery. I can set the system up so that all of the 12-volt draws go through here, but again, we've got that 25-amp uh, limit. So when you're doing this on a motorhome, you really don't want to screw with the original chassis electrical system. So you're only going to do this if you're going to run, let's say, an array of... Uh, ham radio equipment, communications equipment, other types of stuff, uh, which would run better off of the clean 12-volt power that you'll get out of this system as opposed to, let's say, something with the engine running and the engine alternator affecting that power flow and then giving you feedback through a radio or something like that. The uh, system is uh, self-diagnostic to a large degree. These little indicator LEDs actually can change color if you've wired something wrong, which is nice. I had originally wired the panel voltage on this backwards, and it didn't tell me. I, I had to take it off, play with the multimeter, swap stuff around, and then was able to get something out of it. Uh, one of the things that's going to make this thing really useful on a motorhome or, or any kind of mobile application is you can leave stuff on when you're away and come back, and the batteries aren't going to be either dead or overcharged. Uh, this is going to do that. It also is the way to go if you have size limitations on your solar array. If you don't have size limitations on your solar array, go ahead and just get more panels and use a PWM charge controller. 
When people say that MPPT charge controllers produce up to 30% more power, they are more efficient with the power that's already there, but no, you are not producing more power. Uh, what happens is they're simply being more efficient with the amperage that's already there. And in the economy of these things, for example, this one costing $200, uh, which is over twice the money of a pretty decent 30 amp unit from NetMeter Solar, if I wasn't as concerned about space and weight on a roof of a, uh, a travel trailer or a motorhome, uh, let's say, for example, a cabin or a trailer-mounted array where it's just not, not as critical to be one panel less, I would just buy more solar panels. I really would. Uh, I, I think just buying more solar panels in a current economy is better than using MPPT charge controllers until you reach the point where there are limitations on your array and you want to get that much more power out of it. It's just simply not economical on the small arrays to spend the extra money on an MPPT unit unless there's some other reason why you've got to limit the size of the array. For example, on this, it can only, I can only fit so many panels on the toolbox on the roof. Uh, once I filled that toolbox up, I, I have no more space for any more panels. Therefore, I want to get the most out of them. I'm going to use a small-scale MPPT charge controller.